Dance Studio 4.16 was released today on a rather spontaneous note. I've just spent the last half an hour looking through the change lock and I thought I'll give you the highlights and a quick tip here while some building works are going on around me. Don't, don't worry about that. So the two new things that I've discovered were navigational aids as well as palette controls that we now have that we didn't have before. Let's have a look at my smart content library here, my smart content tab on the left hand side. If I scroll the mouse wheel up and down, you can see that with every tick I scroll, it scrolls forward about three rows here. And it has done that before and there was nothing else we could do about it. So if you go and look at Bridget, if I go and scroll down, Bridget goes up and Bridget's gone and then I've got the next figure and then you know, three rows are being scrolled up. But with the new feature, we can use modify keys to do the scrolling and then scroll further or not quite so far. So if I go and hit shift and then scroll up, you'll see that only one row at a time is being scrolled up or down. Whereas when I hold control, then the whole page is being scrolled down. So watch that gorilla at the very bottom of the screen. If I go and hold control and scroll down, then the gorilla is out. So if I have a really large content library, this makes navigation really fast and easy. If I want to browse faster to the bottom of the installed content or the content that I can install. And likewise, if I hold down shift and scroll up or down, then that makes the scrolling go much slower. And this is pretty cool for navigation works in the smart content tab as well as the content library. And this is exciting if you have large libraries, especially if you have that expanded on a second screen or on a second monitor. Speaking of which, there's another interesting, exciting little change that has happened, and that has to do with undocked palettes. So currently I've got all my palettes docked here, but if I go and left click and drag my smart content library off and go and make it floating, then I can go and left click and drag that uh, bottom corner and I can expand it. But this was always a little bit messy if you wanted to maximize it on another screen. And now you can do that. So the cool new thing that they've implemented is that at the top here, the, like next to the tab. So if you have multiple tabs, it'll also work, but just make sure you right click on this space where there is no tab. And then you have the pane group. And now we have a couple of extra options here. So the first one is probably the most exciting one, which is the fit screen height button, fit screen width button and fit to screen button and they do exactly what it says on the box so if I click fit screen height then this happens so my palette is being expanded to the height of the screen and I can undo that by just either moving the palette down or just making sure I can go and make it smaller again if I wanted to or I can go right click again and say pane group fit screen width and then this happens so it fits the whole width of the screen or I can do a combination of the two and I can say fit the screen and then I have my library basically in full view here and once again the same modifier controls apply so I can scroll the mouse wheel and then three rows are being scrolled up or down at the same time or hold shift and then scroll down then we have row by row which is super exciting or we can do control and then we can go a whole page at a time so this is awesome if you have a really large library and you can't really decide what you want to do with them there's one last thing I wanted to bring to your attention. So if you wanted to undo that, you just have to go and uh, it's not like a maximized screen that's kind of in full screen. It just fills the whole screen. So you can still left click and drag the top and then it'll move the position and you can go and take the whole paint tab and just dock it back where it was. That still works. In my case, I'm going to go and undo that again. So I'm going to drag off this again. So it's kind of a shortcut. If you do this frequently, it's just an easy way to get a full screen view of certain tabs or tab groups if you want it. So once again, right click on the untapped portion of your window and go under pane group. There's one other thing I wanted to bring to your attention where the tabs actually show up. The default is that the tabs are currently at the top here, but I might not want that. I might want them on the left. Boom, then we can now do that. So now the tabs are on the left. If I had multiple, so if I got my uh, content library and also drag that into here, then I have two. So it works the same way that the tabs go in different positions. So let me go and put them on the right because maybe that's what I like. Or perhaps I want them at the bottom. That is also possible. Or I want them back at the top. All of these things are now possible and I find that's a very exciting thing. So my favorites are making this whole undocked palette thing full screen. I like that. And then also my second favorite is to shift and then scroll a little bit at a time. I really appreciate that. That was it. Have a wonderful DAS day.